Yeah, the majority of us get into business because we are drivers. We want to run our company a certain way. We have a vision, you know, we have our mission. But a lot of times that mission and vision can get deviated by the team. I didn't think I would ever do a fucking podcast. I didn't ever imagine doing that. It made me realize that my purpose is to help others reach the goal and reach their full capacity. And if I can impact somebody's life, that is bigger than money. That is bigger than anything else. Welcome to Livestream. I'm your host, Dr. Alex Plains, with my co-host, Jeremy Applegate, where we teach you how to stream your life. Stream your life. What do you mean, stream your life? I mean, you know, I think that um, streaming your life is helping them improve um, how they treat themselves. Yes, that's great that you actually brought that up. We haven't talked about, um, you just made me think about the event that we had, the networking event we had here. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it was actually so great. And I want to thank everyone again for coming and supporting us and supporting our team and supporting me. And I met some great individuals that were all focused on one goal, which is growth and being better providers for, for our families. And it was great seeing people from all walks of life, all different types of industries coming together and collaborating about the wind and the challenges they go through. And I cannot tell you, I mean, I saw so many guys and women that are in the age between 18 and 25, and they're building their successful business, making six figures, which is very, very impressive. So keep up the good work, guys. I can't wait to do it again. Yeah, they were streaming their life. Yeah. You know, with, uh, with, uh, with some help. Well, they came, they came to the right event. We met some great people, like yep. I said, and there was a lot of, you know, we had Anthony, you know, multimillionaire there. We had Nick and his beautiful fiance talking, and it was really, really good. I spoke for a little bit. It was really, really good. So, and it was great meeting. We had a couple of drinks. You know, good times. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was a perfect setup. Yeah. You know, a lot of people feel like they need to structure it into a lecture kind of situation. Just get up there, talk. It's very casual. Talk about life. Yes, it's very, very casual. Yeah. And share your story. Share your you story. Know, share your story. So. Continue doing the good work, guys, and, you know, I'm here for you. Like I said, my word is my bond, and ask me on Instagram any questions you have. So um, I want to talk to you a little bit about this uh, this bus analogy. You know, do you drive the bus or are you a passenger on the bus? And with respect to entrepreneurs, how do they, how do they get to the driver's seat and how do they keep themselves in the driver's seat? Because we were talking off – offline about how it's easy for employees to yeah uh, yeah 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 to mutiny it's and, very and, very common i mean the there's been several times in my organization that when i had even two or three practices that i felt that the team was going to overtake me you know <laughs> they build they build they build sides they build groups and you just said mutiny but it actually feels like a mutiny <laughs> and if you don't stand ground and hold defense you know you will lose that drive position and it happens a lot. I mean, I have guys all over the country that ask me, Dr. Plains, you know, I feel like the team tells me what to do. And it happens so many times. And it's funny. It might sound funny to you, but it really does happen. It does happen. I, I just don't know if the team fully understands. Like in the dental realm, you know, they're used to, the dental assistants are used to telling the doctor where to go, right? Yep. Hey, this patient in four is ready for you. Hey, this patient in five is ready for you, whatever. <laughs> and I, sometimes I feel like they struggle with that same communication mindset when there's not patients involved. Exactly. Yeah, I think they continue the flow. Uh, but sometimes they underhand, they under, you know, arm you, right? Is that the word? Undermine you? Undermine you. No. I'm sorry. No, I had a good. brain for it there. No, they undermine you and they, you know, you make a decision that you feel is for the health of the organization and for their benefits, right? Yeah. And they go ahead and they shit talk you behind your back and backstab you. It happens so much. Or you give them direction. Yep. And then they don't even do it. They don't. Or they do, do it. something completely different. They do it, and and you're like, <laughs> didn't we just talk about this like an hour ago? Yeah, but and I didn't you, think it was the right decision. And you and I'm you sorry. did you did agree, and you did sign on this document here that you understood it, and then you're doing the same thing all over again, and it happens. It's lunacy, but it happens all the time. I laugh because it happens all the time, you know. And it's like, how do I? How do I? You're never going to prevent it from happening, right? It's inevitable. It is. It doesn't matter if you're going from one to two, two to four, five to nine, whatever. It's inevitable. Deal with it. But 
I think you, uh, we were talking about this earlier, fortitude and resiliency. I think those are part, those are two important factors on your side as an entrepreneur Yep. to make sure that you are maintaining that driver. Yeah, the majority of us get into business because we are drivers. We want to run our company a certain way. We have a vision. You know, we have our mission. But a lot of times that mission and vision can get deviated by the team. So you got to make sure to have high, you know, core values and thresholds and accountability and expectations from the very beginning. And you got to stay consistent with them all year long. It doesn't stop. It doesn't just start in January. It's not like when you, we all go to the gym in January and we're like, we're going to start getting committed to go to the gym very easily. Most people are not going to the gym by week two or even week one. Yep. The same thing with your industry. If you own a business, you got to be committed 365 days a year to be committed to holding the fort down. Yeah. And man, we go back to this all the time. And I'm going to say this again, self-development. Like as a leader, in order to maintain that chair, that driver chair, you have to continually work on yourself. So then, you know, working on yourself is going to create a situation where you can handle those. Yes. Those yes. A lot of reading, guys. There's a lot of reading. There's so much knowledge out there that before didn't even exist. Yep. I mean, you can easily do anything now with audibles. You can be on the gym. You can be taking a walk. You can be driving. You can be even working on a patient and listening to an audible. I mean, you, there's no excuse for not learning more each day. I walked into a surgery where you were doing a surgery and you were asking Alexa to, uh, to change up the uh, podcast. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you gotta be, at least remember, I was telling you at least start with 15 minutes a day. Yep. I'm at the point that I'm doing at least an hour and a half, two hours a day, you know, but you got to start small. You got to start with at least some small things. And another thing you got to do is you got to be an excellent communicating. Excellent. There's a lot of courses out there in communication, but you got to feel confident having those conversations. And we talk about this all the time and we're being a dead, it's not really being a dead horse because it's a relevant inf conversation, you know, and we're talking specifically the dental industry. Dentists aren't taught how to do that in school. No, absolutely not. Communication, business, you know, it's foreign to them. It is. I asked, a, I interviewed a doctor a couple weeks ago and I said, do you know who John Maxwell is? You want to, you want to know what he said? What? No. They didn't know. Didn't know. How do you not know? I mean, he's only one of the best sellers of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Has like 28 books. 28 books and he's, yeah, he's sold hundreds of millions of copies of everything. Yeah. yeah that's crazy. But, you know, that's, that's the nature of the beast, right? It is. It is. There's another, there's another app called Headway, yeah. which is really, really good that you can get very easily and, and you can listen to books so quickly. Yes. Yes, my point was this guy is not going to be driving the bus. No, he's going to lose yeah. the co-control yeah. of his office. Unfortunately. But maybe in the in the end, he does understand that he needs that self-development. One thing that I want to give the listeners that are in the dental space, guys, there's big groups, there's small groups, there's single practices. There's large DSOs that are going under extremely. They're losing it. You know, you got to be evolved during this time. Then I say it time and time again, the last 10 years, Everybody can be an entrepreneur. Yep. Everyone can own several dental practices, several businesses, and be successful. Well, guys, that time has shifted. If you're not evolved personally and professionally and you hold yourself to the highest standards humanly possible, you will fail during these next three to five years. Correct. And we've been in conversations with people that have said, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next three to five years because I can get practices so cheap. Yep. You know, because uh, pennies on the dollar, pennies on the dollar, because people are failing at their at their practices. So. Yeah. And the, the, the days of brick and mortar and owning like 20 practices and then a big DSO will come and buy you out just because you own 20 locations. Those, that, those days are dead, guys. Completely, completely dead. You work for a big DSO and they will buy any any Anything. crappy practice out there. 100 percent group of 15. OK, let's buy it. Yep. No, no analysis, no identification of the market. If it's a good practice to buy the overhead, they just didn't care. They didn't care. Nowadays, they're depicting your financials. They're looking at everything. They're trying to figure out if it's a solid buy. And yes, they do give you money, but you better continue to produce in the long run because if not, that earnout period is going to be very small and you're not going to get what they promised you. And nothing against DSOs, but for the single practitioner or the smaller groups, just be careful in the deals that you make.
Yeah, they are going into these deals these days with skepticism as opposed to positivity. They want to find out what's wrong with your practice or your group of offices. Yeah, and they do that so they can get it for cheaper. Amen. You know, it's buying tactics 101, you know, consuming. Amen. So you got to just be careful. But if you're going to lead your company, you got to be a driver. You always got to be in that driver's chair. And the people around you need to respect you. And it goes back to what we were talking previously in the last couple of weeks. You cannot lead by fear because that's not going to get you anywhere. You got to lead with good examples, good commitment, good, a good energy, you know, good communication, period. good communication, good discipline. And whenever the floor is busy, it doesn't matter who you are. I tell my team, like, I don't care if you're a director, if you're the owner, if you're a co-owner of this company, you, if there's a patient waiting, they can't be waiting. Correct. You better clean up that room and get the flow going. Cause I don't believe in, a titles and hierarchy and that somebody's better than another. Well, you I know, really don't believe in that. I agree with that because obviously, you know, I started on the operation side in an organization, but now I've transitioned to business development. But when I walk in an office and there's six people standing in the lobby or sitting in the lobby, I'm like, I'm going to the front desk and saying, what's going on with those six people? Why are they out there? Our lobby should really be empty. Correct. You because you're focused on the mission of the, which our mission is to serve our local communities and sure. give the best possible care possible. Yep. You know, I'm big into that. I mean, I believe in customer service and I'm, I believe in focusing on that patient care to the extreme at all times. And when I hear that patients are not getting callbacks or lab cases are getting lost or, you know, we lost a patient because of lack of compliance because the assistant made them wait 20 to 30 minutes, I get freaking pissed off. Yeah. You know sure. I do. Yes, you do. Because it's very important because your name is on the line. Your brand is on the line. And if you're not going to take your brand seriously, you might as well not be doing what you're going to be doing. You, you might as well let the mutiny take place. Yep, and just get bought out for pennies on the dollar. <laughs> no, don't do that, guys. Don't do that. Listen, entrepreneurship is not for everybody. You know, we did a test, and I think less than um, 5% of the population is a driver um, in a personality um, survey yeah. that we did. The DISC. The DISC. So you you got to always have people around. If you're a driver, you always have to have people around you to piece everything together. But you can also be an influencer, be an entrepreneur. You can be a stabilizer, be an entrepreneur. But you will need to have a driver in your organization to drive the business. You always need a combination of all the four different personality styles. Yep, 100%. In order to be successful. So I hope I answered your question. I know you had something else in mind. You were going to tell me something. Well, I think that, you know, I mean, when you're when you're driving the bus, everything's great, right? But when when do you, when when do you recognize that the uh, the passengers are trying to uh, take over? Like what does that look like? Yo, oh, that's you know, great. When do you I, identify that? Yeah, situation? I mean, it's I think it all leads to culture and just negativity and they self-sabotage, you know. Have you ever heard of relationships male and females? Um, that are together and all of a sudden the woman or the man is always complaining about something that's wrong even though things are great that's called self-sabotaging and sometimes us as humans due to past traumas right goes back to childhood and past relationships we go ahead and we start identifying oh my god this is just too good to be true let's create a little chaos let's throw in a little chaos so i can be back in my environment they want to say i told you so Yep, that's correct. I told you so. That's huge. So it's part of it. You know, it's human nature. So what you got to do is once you start seeing that happening, you got to immediately sit down with whoever it is and be like, hey, you're being a total jerk. What is going on? Let's figure this out and let's work through it. Yeah, I mean, we we have these conversations with our team and I'm going to be a little transparent with the viewers here, but we'll have a a surgical tech or or dental assistant (laughs) or somebody come and say, I'm not going to see that patient. Yeah. Well, why? Well, because they're mean. Well, why are they? They didn't come in here mean. No. Like, we created that situation. You know, you created that mutiny. You know, you're the leader in that conversation, right? Correct. You created that mutiny because the patient's on that. And then it goes back to your core values. I mean, you just brought up a good point. Are you focusing on those core values? No. You know, for me, is alignment, transparency, result-oriented, accountability, and discipline. All five of them. Are you following that? And if you're not, then we have an issue and a core vi- value violation, which then creates problems with the mission, which is to serve our local communities and take care of our patients. So right away, 
you easily resolve that conversation by going back to the foundation of your business. And I think it's funny, and I know we've talked about this already too, but the mission, vision, values is critical to the success of your organization because you need that to make sure that all your team members are aligned and you guys are all headed in the right direction. You know, and you can get away with it in the beginning. Yep. Right? I mean, we talk about this. You talk about, hey, I didn't even establish mine until. Yeah, I mean, I I established it in 2020 during COVID. I mean, because I realized that in order to get, continue to grow to the next level. I saw what was going to happen with the economy. I, I saw it for years. And if you listen to my podcast a year ago, everything that I said is happening. You know, the rates went up. They're almost at 6%. You know, the money is ba- basically doesn't mean anything anymore. Everything's gone up. Inflation's through the roof. Finally, it went down a tad, but it's still through the roof. There's problems still going on in China. You know, you got the war of Russia and Ukraine still going on. The market is up and down, volatile as always. The market is still not stable, you know, and this is going to go on for quite a while. We're going through a summer right now. Yeah. Ooh. Right? Right. The seasons, the four seasons. We're going through a summer right now, but there will be a time of calm, you know, but during these times, we got to be very proactive and we got to put a lot of energy into our inputs so we can receive great outputs. I like that. So... I hope I answered all your questions today and thank you for listening to our show and have a great day.